Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jarrett. My lovely wife, Kara, should be back anytime. So, this is the Tangram Progression. Now, this is only a $20 knife, and I am thoroughly impressed. But if you watched my first impressions, you know that I had one major issue with it, and that was this lock bar. So it was incredibly hard to get to. And if you want to see how horrible it was, you can watch my first impressions on it. But right now we're going to get to what I did about it. So I took it apart. This thing does run on T8s all the way around, which is a beautiful thing. The only thing that has T6s is the clip. All the screws came out very easy. There was no red Loctite. Hey, if you guys are interested in any of the tools I'm using, I do have a bunch of links down in the description for tools to work on knives. Also, I have a bunch of sharpening equipment, all kinds of stuff that I recommend. Go check out the description. There's a bunch of links down there. You can support the channel and get yourself some good quality tools that I highly recommend for working on knives. Just fabulous. Came right, came right apart. So after I got it apart, got my Dremel out, and I used my diamond bit at first, which I, I, you know, the 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 Dremel I was using only runs at one speed. I have my big Dremel, which I could set to whatever speed I want. But what I do is, it's not like incredibly strong this little handheld one. So I just use my finger to kind of slow down the bit. Because G10, you know, it uh, at least with these diamond bits, it tends to cut a little bit better at a little bit of a slower speed, not really high. And um, I was using the high speed basically to smooth things out. And it went really good. And then I um, finished it off with a with some um, with some sandpaper. I think it was 300 grit sandpaper. Anyways, I you know I smoothed it out with the sandpaper, and it looks white at first when you first start cutting into it, but once you rinse it off, it goes back to black just fine. So after that, um, the one other little small issue I had was the flipper tab was slick. And even though the action was still pretty decent on it, you know, I figured this is a good opportunity to add some jimping. So turned it around, or took the blade, and went to the flipper tab, and I took my cutting bit. Um, these, it's uh, just a, a cutting wheel um, you would use to cut, you know, whatever, screws, or whatever you want to cut. It's a cutting bit. And I cut in some jimping onto the flipper tab, which, oh, I'm so happy I did. It just... Sometimes when you have a, a, a flipper tab that's slick, it just improves it so much to add some texture. So, now, after doing all that, I have sharpened it. I did not record the sharpening, but I will say I sharpened it up on a 300 grit diamond and then a 600 grit. And this knife took one of the best edges I felt. I know a lot of it has to do with how thin it is behind the edge. So let's get to what it looks like now. First, I just want to say this thing's about eight thousandths behind the edge, right at behind the edge. It goes to ten thousandths, um, a little bit higher, but this thing is so thin, it will absolutely cut paper towel with no problem. If you don't know, paper towel is very hard to cut cleanly i mean this thing is an absolute razor the steel on it is uh an akudo so akudo is basically like a 440c um and man this thing is so sharp i mean it is scary sharp and um so yeah i'm very happy with the way the edge came out you know it's kind of weird or not weird i guess but the 600 grit almost looks like like a 1200 grit finish on the edge we'll look at that in one second but first let's look at the lock bar axis so i cut this side not this side this side already had plenty of room as you can see but when they make it to where this is higher than the lock bar you can't get your finger in there to push it there's just it's like uh my finger's just, I don't know, just too big to, to push it, and I'm hitting a wall. So it's like 
I'm trying to get to this, but I'm hitting this because it's up higher, if that makes sense. So this is what I cut down is right here. Came out, looks really good. And now it is so much better. This thing does have a late detent, but now the jimping came out very nice. I could have did it a little more professional and cleaner, but it definitely looks fine. No issues with it. And this is, you know, this is a $20 knife. So this is you know, a user. That, this is what that, this is that kind of knife. A knife that, you know, you have no problems with changing and modding and doing things to, to make better. So now the action is, I mean, the action was already okay, but now that it has jimping, I mean, the flubber tab, just feel so much better you can still push button it obviously but the light switch on it because before it was just so slick like i would it doesn't have a strong detent so it wasn't like that the, the detent was so strong that it just you know um uh, my finger would just slip off of it but it's just it was so slick i wanted a little bit of texture very happy with it and now since the lock bar is the way it is um with a nice uh good cutout it's nice and in the hand i do not feel the lock bar right here at all so it still feels very comfortable in the hand now the next thing i didn't record it and it was because it wasn't a big deal at all the clip surprisingly for how grippy this texture is this um it, the pocket clip doesn't work that bad it really doesn't but I did take it off and I barely softened up right there. And then I just took it and kind of lifted it up a little bit, you know, held it right here and really just kind of sprung it up a little bit to give it just a little less tension. And it did improve it. It did. But it wasn't bad to start off with. So in and out of the pocket, the clip is just fine. And it was just fine. And now it's even better. But now I'm very happy with the knife. The, the nice ergos are so good. Like I said, the deep hollow grind on this thing. Uh, one, it doesn't have that thick of a blade stock. I'm not sure exactly what it is. You can check if you want to look it up. Maybe I'll put it on the screen. It looks like it's about 125 thousandths or something. But regardless, so thin behind the edge. I mean, it is ridiculously thin. Nice deep hollow. I love it. And man, this edge is so sticky. It's so scary sharp. Um, the Ergo's really good. It is a little boxy, but it feels very nice in the hand still. And, you know, the size of it. Oh, yeah. Also, the jimping up here, you can really lock in right there. The jimping up here feels really good. And that's why I was kind of wanting to replicate the jimping from here to here because I really like this jimping right there. Now, in hand, though, you know, it's not a big, big knife, but it is a full-size knife. So let's let's show some size comparisons really quick so you can really see what this thing is like. And then we'll talk about how it actually cuts. So here's a, a few knives right around, the, not the same price, but in the budget category. Here's the Ganzo FH12. Let me turn it this direction. I think my light is kind of distorting it. Um, So if you can tell... It is a little, the, the, the Ganzo is a little bit longer. Um, and then here is, this is the exact same size as the rat. It's not the, well, it is a real rat, I guess. But this is the Essie of Vispa, which is the same designers from rat. So this is the exact same size as the rat one. Then we have, here's the, the Rake P135 which is uh, much bigger. Well, not much, much bigger, but it's bigger. And then one more, or you know what, we'll, we'll do two side by side. Here's the Best Tech Warwolf. Great, great knife. About the exact same size as the Warwolf. And then here is the, the, um, the Sen Cut Actium. And the Actium is barely longer. Barely, but just a tiny bit. So if you know those knives, you know right around the size of this knife. But it's got a slim profile. 
So let's talk about cutting with it because man, it cuts really good. Cutting with it, it just blazes through stuff. I mean, it, it is a cutting machine. And now that I can easily open and close it, it I, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. So cutting through stuff, you know, you have the straight back profile. So having that straight back design, that neutral grip, you know, all the pressure goes all the way across your palm, which, in, you know, what I, that's what I like. I want all the pressure to be distributed across my palm. I don't want to be pushed in one little tiny area in my hand to where I don't have a lot of leverage. In this case, you have a good amount of leverage. Now you can also use this little back portion right here against your palm. So you kind of lock in like that and, you know, really do some, some uh, belly to push cuts, I guess. You could do that. It just slices so good. Then the utility cuts, it does have a very, very acute tip. So doing utility cuts, I mean, it just, it works so good for all of it. And, you know, it has a little bit of belly. That little bit of belly with that very acute tip. When you do utility cuts, the belly kind of just pulls the material underneath the tip, behind the tip, you know, to, to make really good precision cuts so for a drop point blade it's got a very very useful blade um you know the the look of it really reminds me of the less george um designs and it kind of reminds me of a couple different designs from different you know designers but less george really pops out like that new spartan less george uh knife anyways yeah um, so I'm very happy with the action now. Love the way it cuts. The way it carries is pretty decent. I would, if I could take, if I, if I had it opened back up and if I was going to do anything else, I would add a tiny bit of jimping onto the lock bar. And I only say that because my hands get dry sometimes from work and stuff like that. So my hands are a little slick. It's not even the knife's fault. This is more me. So because I have zero issues unlocking it, but I just feel like I would like the texture of the lock bar a little bit more. You know, I have no issue unlocking it, but I just feel like I, I think I would like the texture a little bit better if it had a little, little bit of like a scuffiness to it. So that's one thing I would like to do. Also, another thing, I wouldn't mind stone washing the liners. The liners are very shiny. And I think that would improve it too, and it would make it look a little bit more expensive. This jimping in some of these areas, you can feel it if you lock in, but it doesn't bother you in your hands at all, but it does have it all over the place. So, good to lock you in. Some bad things now. Um, well, it does have a four-way reversible pocket clip, so it is left-handed, tip up, tip down, any way you like it. It does have weight relief all the way through and through it is riding on steel br well brass cased steel bearings so steel bearings encased in brass so when i took it apart the bearings were flipped like that's what i thought that was weird so the normal way i know bearings face they were facing the opposite way at least one was. The other one I'm not sure of because it fell out before I could really see how it was positioned. So, but whatever. I put them back the way that I know bearings go in. I mean, maybe maybe I'm wrong about this one. But, so, you know, that could, I guess, be considered a negative. Obviously, I didn't like that there was no lock bar access. So, that's going to be a bad thing. The detent is a little light. And I did hear from a lot of, or not a lot of people. I did hear from a couple people that theirs had horrible action. The action just sucked. This one has good action. And, I mean, without the, the jimping I put in, it has good action aside from that lock bar. But now that I put that jimping on there, it just makes it even better. But I do think that the... Uh, the detent could be just a little strong because you can see I can fail it super easily. But I can also open it, you know, no matter what, if as long as I mean to, you know. If I mean to fail it, I can fail it. If I mean to open it, I can open it. So um, another bad thing is, you know, like this rough texture, 
you know, in and out of the pocket, eventually, even though the clip does work pretty good, eventually it is going to chew your pockets up a little bit. That's why scuffing up underneath there is going to improve it and then relieving a little bit of the tension so it's not so tight will massively help because, you know, it's not even, it's just this, you know. Keep grinding your pants across that. I don't care how good the clip is. It's going to, you know, do some damage. So you just take one little area, the, the spot where the clip hits, and just soften it up right there. You can't even tell I did it. So a lot of times when people do that, they make like a whole path right there. I just did that one section. And it seems to be fine now. But other than that, man, $20. I cannot complain. This steel sharpens up so fast, so easy, and takes a nasty edge. Now, it's not going to have um, M390 edge retention. I mean, you know, <laughs> um... Unless if it has like a super heat treat and you're talking about a crappy heat treat on M390, you know, it's not going to be as good as 14C28N or anything like that, but it is going to be easy to sharpen. It's going to take a ridiculously sharp edge and it's going to be easy to hone. So you'll be able to keep up with this for for time to come. You'll be able to just take it on one of your ceramic stones or a strop and tune it up. You know, after a day of use, bring it home, hone it or strop it. It'll take two or three swipes either on a hone or, you know, four or five passes on each side on a strop, you know, depending on your compound. It'll be very easy to maintain. And yeah, you can keep up with it just as good as just about any other steel. So all in all, I think it's a winner. I really do. Now, you're, you're probably saying like, well, yeah, you put a $100 worth of work into it. <laughs> and yeah, you could argue that. I would say, no, I put about $35 worth of work into it. That, in my opinion. So arguably 40 okay let's say 40 dollars if i put 40 dollars in work into this that makes it a 60 dollar knife is it worth 60 dollars no not in today's market i do not think so but i will say this that work was very easy for me to do did not take me long and i would do it again so that says a lot and <clears throat> finding grinds like this you don't see them like this. You really don't. You do not see grinds that in you know that just cut this good and this thin, this deep, and such a great blade shape. And then the choil. If you look at the choil now, eventually in the future, when I put a new choil, it's going to be just fine, nice and easy. I can use a, a a diamond rod, you know, like one of those little file, those little diamond file rods. I could just use one of those. It'd be so easy. Or a Dremel. Even easier. I mean, I like it. I think it's awesome. I think it's a good knife. And, you know, now, is it going to be something I carry and use? Well, maybe not like day to day or anything like that, but I will definitely cut stuff up with it. I'll definitely use it as a work knife around the house. I'll definitely cut carpet, cut cardboard, cut whatever, because I don't care. Do you know what I mean? This is a knife that's disposable. It's a disposable knife to me. I can easily just tear the crap out of it and not care. And also, if I run into somebody that needs a great knife, here, you know, I can give them a great knife. And now that I've tuned up, it's a good knife for them. And they know what it's like now to use a good knife. Um, I'm not saying it's Civivi quality, especially not the ones with the hollow grinds. But, all right, guys, this video's been going on way too long. I love all you guys. Peace.